So with Studio One version 6.6, .6, we see a really awesome update with respect to the Dolby Atmos renderer, and that is the addition of composite beds. So for anybody who's watched any content, whether it's mine or another content creator, you will most likely have heard someone refer to beds versus objects. If you're not familiar with what the differences are, I'll make sure that I add a link in the description below and also in an info card above. But essentially what this means is that when you export your ADM master, that you have a fixed set of channels that can sit in the bed, and then you also have multiple different objects. Now, the channels, like I said, they're fixed. And for the most part, most applications have been supporting a 7.1.2 bed. And what that means is that you have your seven surround channels, you have your point one, which is your LFE, and then the point two actually represents two vertical speakers or height speakers. Now, the thing to take note of when you're talking about sending things to the bed is that if you have any information that is like front to back panning that you could have done with the panner or anything like that, it basically kind of gets like mono summed and it just shows up as a, as a split pair that is kind of seen as a mid. So you have to imagine if you have your left and right speakers in front of you and then your left and right speakers behind you, that if you sent out equal amount of information from both the center and, or both the front pair and the rear pair, that it would be perceived as coming from the middle. And the best way I can explain this in a context that makes sense for people who are coming from stereo is just imagine that you have like a really nice stereo spread on a track and then you mono sum it and it folds it down, you lose that spread. You lose the ability to differentiate the left to right information, that discrete information. It is very similar when you're talking about a quad pair of overheads. Because if you take a look at what we're seeing, here is your front over here, your front left and your front right in terms of your ceilings. And then here are the rears over here. Like I said, if you send out a 7.1.2, basically picture that these give equal information and it's just coming out of a straight line and it, it does lose some definition. So how do we switch over to the 7.1.2 beds? Well, I have an Atmos session over here that I've put together for sake of demonstration. I'm going to open up the Dolby Atmos renderer. And as you can see over here in terms of bed format, we have the ability now to choose all these new options. So we have 5.1.2, 5.1.4, 7.1.4 and 7.1.6. I'm going to choose 7.1.4. So now my bed format actually matches my speaker. Other fact is today I just actually finished mounting my Iris Pro 4s as my height speakers and I finished the Sonarworks calibration. So I'm pretty excited to get moving with mixing and immersive now that I have my whole setup done. So now we have a bed format that matches our speaker format. So now, I want to kind of drill in why this is important because it's kind of hard to put this into context if you haven't sat in a room and actually played with the panners and listened to how you perceive different sounds moving around. If you take into context things like reverbs, for example, many DAWs have their own reverbs that sound pretty good. And if you use those, you essentially have the ability to create a really nice immersive or spatial sounding reverb. So if we listen to this track over here, I've got this soloed out. Actually, let me make sure I'm just isolating just this one track. So I'm gonna solo this out for a second. And if I stop it, we have this nice wash of decay. We have this nice reverb that's kind of like blending out. Now I'm recording the binaural feed for everybody here. So what you're listening to in terms of the playback is you are actually listening to the binaural feed that's being sent. And this is of course, based on the actual binaural metadata settings and they're all set to mid. I'm not going to bother changing those, but you are hearing essentially a binaural rendering, the Dolby Atmos binaural rendering of my 7.1.4 mix. And that's what is going to be going out on YouTube when I print this. But if we take a look at tracks, like for example, in Studio One, this by default was set to 7.1.2 because that is what my bed format was sent to. But now that we have 7.1.4 composite beds, I can actually change this channel format to be 7.1.4. What this now means is that if you have discrete information that is going out, for example, actually, let me change that one more time. While I change this, keep an eye on this mix tool. Watch what happens in real time. If I change this to 7.1.2, notice that it shrunk down in terms of its channel format. Let's change this back one more time. We'll go to 7.1.4. Now, if you have third-party plugins that you've bought, like delays or reverbs or anything like that, immersive spatial audio-based reverbs, or if you're working with the stuff that's stocked to your DAW, like I, in this case, I'm working with Room Reverb, 
Take a look at what happens here. We can now solo out all of these. We're gonna solo out these top four speakers. And if I press play now, actually let's also solo out just the reverb return. Let's press play. Now, if I hop into ground control sphere, you can see this information over here. This is just coming out of my left front, right front, left rear front, and right rear front. Sorry, my ceiling speakers. But I'm hearing a difference between the front and the back. Whereas before, if I was using a, a 7.1.2 bed, I would have just left any reverb or any effects return in 7.1.2, and I would have lost that front to back panning in terms of that information. So this makes things very, very useful. Now, in terms of the way that this actually works, if we open up the Dolby Atmos renderer again really quickly, I want you to take a look at what happens with the, the Dolby Atmos channels, the configuration. If I move to 7.1.2, keep your eye on these little circles here. Keep your eye on this, watch this. So as you can see, we have these little circles which are indicating that it's a composite bed. And also what it says is basically that object channel used for composite bed, object channel used, object channel used, and object channel used. A 7.1.2 bed was basically a 10 channel format that was kind of like stitched together. And you had your left, right, your center, your low frequency, left surrounds, right surrounds, and your rear surrounds. And then you had two height channels, but they were mid. So think of them as kind of monosummed. It's not exactly monosummed, but it's kind of monosummed. That's what we were hearing before. But the way that this works is that it is basically borrowing a set of objects and then it is instead of creating a 10 channel file, it now only needs to create an eight channel poly file, which is kind of an interleaved file that can be played back by the Dolby Atmos renderer. But any information that you had for your left top front and your right top front and your left top rear and your right top rear, this is being routed directly to a set of objects now. So we have that discrete front to back placement. This makes such a big difference when you talk about working with effects like reverb. You can really, really hear the difference between something just being centered and having discrete information. Because also now keep in mind that if we wanted to use things like, for example, if we were using the surround panner versus spatial objects, that now if you have something where you have it spread out, where you have something where you've kind of separated things, in this case, I have the height channel elevated a bit, but in this case, I'm kind of splitting this so that it's coming out of the sides and you could have something that's a quad channel. But the minute you now activate the elevation that you are now able to kind of get any front to back information that you're having, if it's there, or if you're talking about working with objects and sending them to the front or to the back, you're hearing that on the actual objects, but anything that's routed to the bed, you're hearing that too. But in my mind where this really comes into play is when you talk about working with things like reverbs and stuff like that, this becomes a really big deal because we're no longer limited to losing that front to back separation with our effects returns. So like I said, in Studio One, super easy to make that change from within the Dolby Atmos renderer, and also super easy to make sure that you're just choosing the appropriate channel format in your effects. This is obviously being routed directly to the bed, but we have the benefit now of not just having the mid information for the height channels, we have that front to back, which is really, really useful. So this is going to be a big game changer for a lot of people who are working and mixing in immersive and have felt the limitations of losing the front to back depth or perception when working in Dolby Atmos. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.